through the week. Um, up a room, I don't know if we would have had any would have had anything to come back to. Not being in church that long. <clears throat> I love church. Yeah. Amen. Love being in church. I love attending church. And I praise God for the Zoom and the Zoom services and all that. But that, that is not a, a, a suitable substitute for our coming together. And um, I thank the Lord 219 weeks ago that as soon as the governor of North Carolina was overturned, the rule, the ruling was he exercised power that he did not have to shut down the churches. And as soon as that was overturned, that was overturned on a Saturday. The next day, we were back in here, and we've been in here ever since. <clears throat> and not just, not only here on Sundays, but our weeknight services. Because I found out that... Uh, COVID is not a, he's not a gentleman. I mean, think about it. If it's all right to come to church on Sunday, it ought to be all right to, come, to attend church on Thursday. Amen. I knew something was wrong in the middle of the pandemic when you're sitting in the, on the plane and everybody had to have their mask on. But then when they serve you your food, then you remove the mask to eat. Then as soon as you finish eating, you put the mask back on. So I said, well, maybe the, the virus won't attack me while I'm eating. And then as soon as I put the, get finished eating, uh, uh, I put the mask back on. As a matter of fact, I got in trouble one time with the stewardess. Uh, I ate slow. I tried to make my meal last the whole flight. And she told me, you're taking too long to eat. You got to put your mask back on. So I did it, but I knew that something's wrong with that. And thank God, here we are, uh, alive and well and doing good <clears throat> in the name of the Lord. Three babies were saved yesterday. Three, three, three babies. Three mothers changed their minds and decided to give birth. While I'm talking about that, I, that's a good segue, a good segue into uh, something that I want to, to talk to you about. Three babies are saved there. Now, there is a style of politics that um, is the worst kind. And my prayer to you as a pastor is that you not practice that style of politics. And that style of politics is called identity politics. What is identity politics? Identity politics is politics or a style of voting or participating in the political process where what is mainly considered about the politician is their gender or sex or race or something like that you consider those things ahead of policy. To practice identity politics is, to put it politely, stupid. That's not wise. I like him because he's a white guy. Or I like her because she's a, a black girl or Asian girl or whatever. 
I like this person because they checked some kind of identity box. That should be your last consideration. If at all, as a Christian, as a Christian, your first, well, as a citizen, as an informed citizen, your first consideration, now I'm, I'm saying first, I'm saying first to be nice. To me, your only consideration should be what is this person for? What are they for? And how does their stated position line up with mine? And as a Christian, I want mine to line up with the Bible. No spirit-filled Christian who is following the Holy Spirit will ever, if you're following the Holy Ghost, take your Christian doctrine and your spiritual beliefs and put them to the side. I have been criticized both in print, in the news, and uh, online and everywhere else. Uh, people said, you know, the problem with Wooden is he doesn't know how to separate his politics from his Christianity, from his religion. I want to say that that will, I pray that that will be a problem till the day that I die. Because I don't believe you should separate anything from your Christianity. If you are a Christian, if you're born again, I don't believe that you set aside your Christian beliefs. Now, uh, uh, it is apparent that not every Christian share that belief. But I don't know how you can serve the Lord and put him on a shelf when you want to and then take him off the shelf when you don't. That's what identity politics does. I do not consider the sex, the race, the color, or any of that stuff of anybody running. I want to know one thing. What are you for? What are your positions? And I have certain non-negotiables not all of my positions are non-negotiable. Some are negotiable. We can negotiate on raising taxes or lowering taxes. We can negotiate on things like that. But I have non-negotiables. Life for me is a non-negotiable. Black folk who do not Stand for life. Who do not push back against these abortionists. You are voting against, we're voting against our own self-interest. <laughs> Nothing eliminates African Americans in this country like abortion. It is the greatest killer of African Americans than the other five leading causes of death combined. Cancer, heart attack, you know, high blood pressure, those things. Put them all together. They don't come up to abortion. Anybody who is pushing that cannot get my support. Amen. 
and a politician. And a politician who votes for the infant born alive mortality, maternity act. They tried to pass a law that if a baby survived the abortion process and the little thing is laying there, that little child breathing, somehow it survived it, and they do. They wanted to pass a law that in doing that, you would have to give the child sustenance. Help the baby live. I'm going to preach in just a minute. I'm going to cut my remarks in other areas. And if there's anybody in here, I have to say this, who have had an abortion and the Lord has forgiven you, walk in your forgiveness. Don't get uncomfortable. Don't feel the need to leave. Don't think that you can't say amen. Don't, don't do that. Because that's not the point. We're trying to save the next baby. And, uh, uh, and, and I want you to think about these things. Because there are very few places you can go where the preacher talks about it at all. And that's why so many get uncomfortable when they visit us and we talk about it. Because we know Red around the corner ain't going to bring it up. Up the street, around the corner, down the way. Except to say something as stupid as, I, I'm for women's rep reproductive rights. Well, who's really for women reproductive rights are people who are against abortion. Because there's no reproduction in abortion. There's no reproduction in abortion. If you know what abortion is, there's no re reproduction. Anytime they have to lie to you about a thing to get you to vote for it, it's a pretty good sign that you don't need it. We're for women's health right issues. What are you talking about? Well, uh, 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 abortion. These people, to show you what they think of African Americans, I'm headed somewhere. I'm going to preach in a minute. Some of you look at me like, this is not what I came for. Well, this is what you're going to get unless, you know, you get mad and leave and you always have that option. We understand. We understand. And we'll be here next Sunday when you come back because after a while the Holy Ghost is going to work on you and say, you know, that preacher, was, that preacher was trying to help you. That preacher was telling you the truth. I'm going to show you what these uh, abortionists and uh, these depopulationist people, the depopulationist people, depopulation, they think, they think that there's too many people. So they're trying to kill people. The depopulationists don't want the world to reach 9 billion, which we're approaching it. So they, 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 they want to kill people. People they're trying to get rid of are us. They, why? Because we're black? No, because we're stupid. See, in, in, in this high stakes game, the vulnerable is the ones who are preyed upon. And they tell you things, they tell us things that speaks to their opinion of our intelligence. Anytime you can tell a race of people that it is healthier for a black woman to have an abortion than to give birth. That tells you right there what they think of your intelligence. They wouldn't dare try to tell an Asian woman that. They wouldn't tell a white woman that. They won't tell a Hispanic woman that. But they tell black folk that. Well, the numbers show. They can make numbers say whatever they want the numbers to say. Numbers, they got marketers, they got professional people. How many of you believe that breakfast is the most important meal of the day? Let me see your hand. How many have heard that before? So y'all scared to raise your hand. <laughs> but that statement came really from marketers. Because the pork industry introduce bacon to the public. 
But bacon was initially introduced as a dinner meal feature. And people was buying the bacon. So they came up with, we're going we're gonna to switch it from dinner to breakfast. And tell everybody that breakfast is your most important meal. Folk been eating bacon ever since. <laughs> the power of marketing. The power of, 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 of fooling folk. Some of y'all, you don't you done let them convince you that you ain't got to exercise, you ain't got to go to the gym, you ain't got to change what you eat. Just go on and take a shot. And you'll lose all the weight you need to lose. But now, check on the side effects. I've told you this before. The real commercial of anything like that is, the, is what they say when they're talking fast. That's the real commercial. Don't pay attention to the music. You know. That part, right at the end. And that's your real commercial, right there. That, that's when they're telling you, this will kill you dead. Right. Say so you start to get rid of a rash on your arm, but say one of the great side effects is, side effects is diarrhea. I, I think I'd contend better with the rash. <laughs> Y'all don't like my preaching today. Amen. Amen. Um, but yeah, that's what they're trying to tell us. And so got you thinking that you, you do better to kill your baby than to have your baby. And the way it is uh, disproportionately affecting us. I think y'all to know these things. And if, and if after you know it, you still, you still all right with it, and the Holy Ghost don't, don't check you, I'm not the Holy Spirit. I just don't believe that tampons belong in a boy's bathroom. But now, I'm not calling any names, but we have someone running who did that in his state signed into law he did. He did. in his state signed into law not not just the men's room the boys room little high school boys but boys don't know what a tampon is half these men don't know this boy don't have a clue now why is, is that kind of, what kind of depraved mind? I couldn't trust a person who thinks like that with any decision. So I pray, having said that, that you not fall victim to identity politics. That you do your homework. Find out what a person is for. Amen. What they're for. And uh, don't worry about whether you like them or not. See, you need, because hair, whether you like it or not, complexion and all that stuff is not what you got to live with. What you got to live with are the policies that they will put forth. And so I thought I would just bring that up. I thought I would bring that up. Uh, but we saved three babies. And, and, and you know what? One of the greatest challenges we have is getting people who look like us and preachers who look like us, to be honest with you, to just go down to the clinic one day. Just see. Just take, pick a Saturday. You don't even have to say anything. Hide. Go hide behind the tree. And just watch and see all of the black folk. There's no white people there? Well, yeah, but we outnumber them in terms of uh, aborting the baby 20 to 1. If there, if there are 30 ladies who show up that day 
If 30 show up on a given Saturday, this is just one day out of the week, if 30 show up, 25 are African American. Now I'm being conservative, really it's 26, 27. And then you might find a Hispanic and uh, out of the whole time I've been gone, I saw one Asian. But they depend on us. And they go to our communities and campaign telling us to vote against our own future. So there are other issues, not if you don't get born. Not, not, if, not, not if you don't get born. And uh, I don't know what a person can be for that would erase them being against life. Then they're pushing this homosexuality and lesbianism. And I notice this. These are two major things that they're trying to sell, sell you. Neither one of them produce children. And they aim it at us. Because they feel like we really don't have to make a good argument to black folk. We're blacks. All we got to do is make them think that they're, they're making history. That you're doing something. So well, 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 wait a minute. Well, what is what is this? Oh, you have to ask that question. That's, don't worry about that. No, get your questions answered. Amen. Insist. Do your homework. And and by the way, by the way, I'm one of the few black preachers in the world, in the world, in the United States, who's going to tell you what I'm telling you now. I'm one of the few. Oh, no two ways about that. I'm one of the few. Because cause the rest of them tells you who you are. Now, we are black, so that means we are. And then they say that word. And, uh, and, and, uh, um, but I'm going to say to you, that's you, as I have always said, I haven't changed from anything. Do your homework. Find out where these people stand. We made history. We made history. We got, we made, we had to, we got, we said we had the first black president when we, oh wait, when we got President Obama, right? We made history, we made history twice. We got that history, and then we got marriage redefined. Because he said same sex marriage is the direction that the country should go in. So we made history. Now men can marry men. The Supreme Court jumped in it too. Now we made history, but it sure wasn't good history. Look at your neighbor and say, hey, history maker. Yeah, you made history all right. Now two men can't even watch TV. Then messed up all the commercials. Now what's wrong with Dwayne Wade? Oh. Anyway, let me move on. I've given this enough time. Say amen. amen. Bishop, why are you talk about this stuff so much? Uh, because I don't get much help. Somebody got to bring it up. I love you. And I think we have a right to live and to be born just like everyone else. You know what somebody said? They said, well, you know, one party, I'm trying not to name anybody, uh, fight for people to get born, but they don't care anything about them after they're born. That's not true. But if that were the case, don't you still think the person has a right to be born? Don't you still think you know, that the person has a right to be born? I do. Say amen. amen. So we, we, we're just in an odd day. We need to pray now. I'm spending too much time. And, uh, but now, this thing that happened in Illinois, I got to bring this up. Uh, the young lady called the police. Young African-American Young lady called the police 
It was in Illinois. The body cam is telling the whole story. I didn't want to put the body cam up here. I didn't want to let y'all see the footage. Sonia Messi, 36 years, years old. She called 911 for help. And there's a 36 minute video. I've seen the video. I'm looking at a lot of it before I came out. And that lady got executed. She was no threat to that officer. So I do my homework. I talked to a former officer. And the officer told me there were so many levels of training that should have taken place. Number one, just given the distance between them and her, she was of no threat. She did not, according to the body camera, act like she was going to dash water on them. She was of no threat. And with the distance, if they thought that she might do something like that, which she had already told them, I love y'all. You didn't know that, did you? Told them, I love you. All they had to do was just back up. That's training. Just increase the distance between them and her. Because if she's armed with hot water, how about before you pull out your gun and shoot her in the head, how about give, tasing her? How about spraying something? How do you pull out a gun and say drop the water? You can't drop a pot full of hot water. Drop it. You can't. Because if you drop, if you, has anybody ever had a pot full of hot water? I tell you what you do. You go home and drop it. Boom. When it gets through splattering all over you, they got to rush you to the hospital. And uh, they killed that woman. That officer shouldn't have never been hired. He, didn't, uh, he can't keep a job. And uh, you can't shoot somebody for saying Satan the Lord rebuke you. Right. Now she did tell him that. Well, we think you're going to pour water on. She said, I rebuke you, devil. You can't pull out a gun and shoot someone for that. There's nowhere uh, that she was in her home exercising her First Amendment rights. That's wrong. And I'm glad that he's arrested. And awaiting trial. And um, 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 things like this ought not to be in ought not to be and what they tend to do is that they color the forces wrong no one hates a law enforcement officer like this guy like other law enforcement officers the good ones because everybody gets colored painted with a broad brush and that girl is gone and uh, girl I, I mean no disrespect that lady a grown woman she's 36 years old is gone African American, she was black, and the two officers that showed up were white. And um, and one of the two shot her. A headshot. So we pray that the uh, criminal justice system will work. Say amen. amen. Say amen. Yesterday, we fed over 559 persons with our manifest food giveaway. Two souls were saved during the evangelism yesterday. We just had a successful holy convocation. And I'm going to ask Elder George Hyman to stand. He is, where's Brother George? He's, well, me, uh, uh, well, he's here because he was just sitting over there playing the organ. He didn't know I was going to call him out. Hey, y'all let George know. Where's Brother Joe? There he is. See, the musicians, they play, and then they take a break and refresh themselves and whatnot. But that man is our latest ordained elder. We're proud of you. Amen. And next Sunday is our church anniversary, as we've mentioned. And I want you to know that next Sunday is going to be special. We're going to do a special little ceremony in the front.
You see right there in the front, there is um, a painting of the founder and his spiritual son. The founder's wife have gone to heaven. We have had a painting drawn of her. And we're going to have her mother, the late great mother, Willa Dean Turner, beside her husband. And your first lady, first lady Pamela Wooden, beside the pastor. And their pictures will be put up and hung on the wall in the vestibule. This will be a part of our church anniversary service. And this is our way of honoring both women. Amen. But they have both played a tremendous, a tremendous role. Amen. Uh, uh, I have uh, since being appointed. That, see, that's how it looks. I have since been appointed. Built on another man's foundation. He laid the foundation. And I have built on the foundation. His wife helped him lay the foundation. My wife has helped me build on the foundation. Give her a big hand. Amen. All right. On the 25th of August, we got women and men preaching their initial sermons. That's going to be great. All right. I honor everybody. God bless my first assistant in his absence. He was out in, uh, I think, Oklahoma, preaching out there. And uh, he took John Jr. with him. <laughs> Little John was looking at his daddy and looking at his mother and his granddaddy and things going on in the church. He told his dad, Dad, I want to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> so his dad said, come on, come on. So he wanted to let him see the other side of it. And he's as wide-eyed and as excited as he can be. I'm glad that he wants to be in the church. Amen. To my second assistant, Elder Anthony Wilson, we praise the Lord for him. We want to praise God for our third assistant, Elder Robert Williams. Amen. And to all the elders and the brethren, a big special shout out to Brother Kenley Williams. We went, on, we went, we went to Goose Creek, South Carolina yesterday to the homegoing service of Mother Willie Mae Rivers. And uh, Brother Kenley Williams, Brother Kenley, wave your hand. He drove me down there and got me back. And Sister Yvonne, he took good care of us. And um, he's driven for me a multitude of times, an excellent driver. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, just would not, would not let me give him a dime. I, uh, Pastor, I love my leader. And this is just the way I serve. And uh, I appreciate him. Uh, it would have been difficult uh, for me to get there yesterday otherwise and uh, got there end up on program. Ain't that something? God is good. Uh, I want to thank the Lord for our supervisor, Mother Beverly DeJanae, <clears throat> District Missionary Margaret Mose, all of the missionaries, praise the Lord, and uh, to Mother Williams and our mothers, Thank God for you, to our wonderful First Lady, my lovely wife, Pamela. We certainly do thank God for her, and upper room to all of you, to our friends who are streaming today. Amen. Thank you all for uh, uh, being here and for praying for us, and we just had a tremendous convocation from the start to the finish. And to me, the icing on the cake was when our presiding bishop came on Friday night and preached to us. <coughs> I appreciate his coming. I appreciate the word that God gave him. And uh, 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 we, we serve, we serve in the Lord's church. Amen. And saints, let us continue to serve. Now, uh, some of you, I'm just going to say this so I can get out my... my I, so I have to deliver mine. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll come out another way. Now, you ain't got to worry about me changing. See, I've been preaching and have, my positions 
have been, they were fixed when you came. I didn't get them from the Republican Party. I didn't get them from the Democrat Party. I got them from the Bible. And the last time I checked, the Bible has not changed. Hallelujah. And so, what's going on, Jesus, and the things of God? But at the same time, even Solomon asked God to give him wisdom to know how to go out and to come in. So, you got to know how to work with people. You got to know how to compromise. I preached this one time without being compromised. Is that Bible? I said it, didn't I? I'm not going to say it if it's not Bible. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego compromised without being compromised. They worked in the administration of King Nebuchadnezzar. They went to the dedication of his statue. They participated in all of the festivities until it got up to a certain point. When it get, once it turned religious, they said, now nah, we can't bow to your stature nor to your God. We do not um, believe anything that we don't believe. Say amen. amen. And the church will continue uh, to stand on God's truth. Say amen. amen. So you just... And any time the pastor leads you in a direction that you may not understand a little bit, study it and give it a chance to play itself out. Amen. And you'll see um, that we're following God. I appreciate the leader for coming. If there's an area of disagreement, and he and I both have talked about it, it didn't stop him from coming. It certainly wasn't going to stop me from inviting him. And we had church. And the Lord blessed us. And we still stand where we stood. Yes. Say amen. So that's, that's all I got to say about that. Psalms 34. So I have to speak to these things. Amen. I have to speak to them. And I know some will say, well, I don't think uh, you, you uh, needed to, and I appreciate that. But you know, there's some things God showed a pastor that he doesn't show anyone else. And especially if it's something concerning you, me. Amen. I'm, I'm glad to be able to show the country and the world and folk who stream Two African-American men working together. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Not at each other's throats. Not he, uh, Working together in the work of the Lord. One's the leader and the other's the follower. Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. That's God's way. Yeah. And that'll teach you. Because you, some of you, you done join every church in Raleigh. Because the moment you come up and you have a disagreement, you're gone. So you don't develop long-term relationships. You ain't going to get along with anybody 100% of the time. Amen. Somebody testified they want to thank God. Why are you getting Psalm 34? Want to thank God for 50 years of marital bliss. Now, if you don't stay but 15 minutes, you got to go by hell for telling that lie. Because you have not had 50 years of marital bliss. Now, you may have had 50 years of marriage. But it wasn't marital bliss. Blessed. You might not get 50 days of bliss at a time because you're different. I love Pam. We're working on 40 Four years. But in, but in some ways, we're different. And uh, when she's different from me, it doesn't mean that she's deficient. And my difference doesn't mean that I'm deficient. 
So now we get, but now, now, but you know what that means? That means uh, until we work it out, bliss. Bliss is out because we got to, you know, we got to talk about it. Amen. Amen. And nobody's always right. right. Nobody's always wrong. Any husband who you, well, my wife only goes along with everything that I say. And that's it. That's the way you run your house? Well, you better watch it because she's saving money. She's She's getting ready to leave you because you're crazy. She can't live like that. Among all, this is what I discovered that I, you know, among all the wonderful assets that God has blessed the female with, guess what, guys? She also comes with a brain and an opinion. (laughs) And boy, you got to deal with that. (laughs) <laughs> and you can't deal with that by ignoring it and by acting like you know you're always right you're not always right and lady you're not always right that stuff happy wife happy life well now that can't be the whole rule I can't make it rhyme but happy husband better be in there somewhere too See, everybody need to be happy sometimes I just can't, I just can't get a jingle out of it. <laughs> huh? Happy house, happy spouse, okay. That's good. That's a husband, spouse, husband, and wife. All right. See, see, see? Say amen. All right, I'm not going to preach to you too long. Y'all, y'all tired of me. But I have to throw these things out. Amen. Psalms 34. Beginning at the first verse, David says, and this psalm is attributed to David. The whole book of Psalms is attributed to him, but he did not write every psalm. But he indeed wrote this one. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. He gives an invitation. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. And he begins to instruct. He begins to teach. I sought the Lord and he heard me. And look at this. If you're writing in your Bibles, underline this. And delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were enlightened. And their faces, thank God, was not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him. And for those of you who write in your Bibles, please underline this part. And saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him to deliver them. Oh, taste and see. Another invitation. That the Lord is good, an invite to taste him and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Yet another invitation. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no want, there is no lack to them that fear him. Then he compares God's uh, delivering power to that of an apex predator. He said, the young lions, it's not babies, it's not cubs, not lions whelp, but these are the vicious hunters, do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. I'll stop right there. I want you to, you to focus your attention on the fourth and the sixth verse. Verse four says, I sought the Lord and he heard me 
and delivered me from all my fears. Verse 6 says, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. I want to preach today from these uh, passages. I cried and he delivered me. I cried and he delivered me. And I thought that I want to leave that I extrapolate from the B clause of both verses. The Lord who answers, whose answer, the Lord whose answer is action. See, he said, I sought the Lord. He heard me action and delivered me. He did something about it. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and action saved him out of all his troubles. God's getting ready to perform some acts on the behalf of the saints. Glory to God. Preach me Lord. In Jesus holy name we pray. Amen. Allow me to begin this message, <clears throat> and I pray that uh, uh, you all will be a little better than they were at eight. They made me work hard. I want to thank God for my brother. I love Heath Donovan, love, and his lovely wife, Paula. It's an honor to see you all today. That's... that's that's my, that's my little brother, but he's a, a fantastic man and married a fantastic woman and they have a lovely life together. Um, got a chance not too long ago to just dine at their lovely home and Pam will tell you, they laid out a spread for us and uh, I dined, we dined like kings and queens. Praise the Lord. And you could feel it from their heart. And I'm happy for them. And thank you all for coming today. Amen. We're, we're, hey, we're, we're, we're making it. We're making it. We all miss mama. Funny thing about missing is that triggers. Everybody who just lost a loved one, it triggers. The thing that triggers, it just triggers. Sometimes it's a phrase. Sometimes it's a, a comment. Sometimes it's just a certain time of the day. Certain way the phone sound when it rings. I have been very reluctant to answer the home phone now. I answer myself. But the home phone, I, uh, uh, because I know it's not mother. That's, that's the main person who called me on the home. It ain't, it ain't, it's not her, so she's in heaven. And just things like that. And we're getting each other uh, through it. I didn't say we're getting over it. But through. Because you have to carry on. And uh, I can hear her in my mind looking at me. I can see her looking at me saying, can you handle it? She challenged us. She was a tough cookie. Amen. She challenged us and uh, told me when they pat, we all know how you are. No, you know, I was a crybaby in the group. So I said, now, Lord, anoint me to man up a little bit. From time to time, I ask her, Mama, how am I doing? Say amen. She don't answer back, but I imagine it. Some of you think your some of you think your deceased loved ones be coming to see you and talking to you. They can't. <laughs> and they wouldn't if they could. Ain't nobody leaving Jesus. Get in the presence of the Lord. What? The Lord could ask them, you want to go back and talk to Pat Tom Gabriel and he 
My mother would answer God like she answered me when I asked her if she was going to take that COVID shot. She would tell the Lord, no. <laughs> They're on their own now. I did all that I could. Say amen. Let me get on this. I know y'all think I'm crazy, but uh, I'm talking to you about something here. Our God, let me say this. With everything that's going on, the Lord told me, he said, Pat, Patrick, preacher, remind upper room that I am not inactive. The God of the Bible has not gone off somewhere in West Heaven and quit his job. He's not Baal. Elijah said that when, the, when they prayed and asked Baal to come and light the fire, Baal didn't answer. So Elijah, I guess Elijah would have been accused today of being disrespectful of someone else's religion. Elijah said, where's your God? Is he going to the toilet? Praise the Lord. Our God is not missing in action. You need to know this because if you're not careful, Satan will cause you to fail to see God. And make you think that the things that we see that are going on on this planet, whether it's entertainment, politics, family, familiar issues, you name it, the devil, if he can, he will keep you from rising above these things and seeing the hand of God. And the end result of that is you get discouraged. You get, you get worn out. You throw in the towel. Satan want to convince you that it is your job to make sure you take care of yourself because all you have is yourself. No, that is not true. We have someone who sits high and looks low. We have a God. God bless my friends right there. God bless y'all. Good to see you. Good to see you. They can't tell I'm pointing at them. Amen. On the screen. Yeah, from Georgia. I remember y'all from last time. God sits high and look low. And he says this in Hebrews chapter 4. I want you all to see this. Because God wants, I, listen, today somebody needs this. You need to enter into God's rest. He has a rest for you. You're tired. You need a respite. And God's rest here is God's uh, rest, his strategy, his timing, his will. Hallelujah. It's submission to him. When you enter into God's will and God's timing and God's way, you rest. I mean, chaos can be everywhere. Trouble everywhere. All around you. Just crazy things. And yet, there is a rest for the people of God. And the rest here, I'm not talking about dying and going home to be with the Lord. Because then you're out the game altogether. But while here, there's a place of rest that each believer can enter into. The Bible teaches in uh, Hebrews chapter number, number 4 and verse 11 and 12. So let us Labor, therefore, to enter into, look at this, that rest. God's strategy, the strategy of God. And God's timing. And God's way. God's provisions. Submitting ourselves to him. Amen. That's rest. When you let the wheel go of life, you let the reins go. And you say, Lord, I've done as much as I can. I'm going to trust you. Lest any man should fall, uh, uh, any man fall, fail. Let me read that. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Rest 
work to enter into his rest so you won't be like they were in verse 1 and 2 where it says let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest strategy timing provisions his ways any of you should seem to come short of it. There are so many stressed out saints. Worried believers. Satan's aging us too fast. What's that chemical your body produces when you're real stressed out? Cortisol. Cortisol. We're blowing up. Stressed out. Stressed out. And you, you don't understand it yourself. It ain't that you're eating all that. But if you work, you're worried. I'm preaching good. I know it. I know it. You're worried. You're uneasy. And I'm not saying that you, that you don't have legitimate reasons. See, that's when it takes faith. See, it's when it takes faith. That's why you have to work to believe. That's why you need to be in a church where stuff like this is preached. So you can bridge the gap. So you can find a way to take your burdens to the law. And then leave them there. See, a lot of us take them. And then when we leave, we leave with them. No, God says, I want you to take them. Drop them off. And leave them there. That's a challenge. Hallelujah. That will disturb you. See, the Bible says, uh, lest a promise being left, let us therefore fear lest uh, a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Some of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached. That is the gospel of rest. As well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Not being united with faith in them that heard it. I mentioned this last Sunday. For we which have believed. Do enter into rest. We abide. It is our privilege to abide in God's rest. Hallelujah. Part of the privilege of being a believer is the privilege of being able to rest in him. And here's why we can rest. Verse 12, for the word of God is quick. This is my point I'm trying to make. And powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That is, the word of the Lord is quick. It is living. Powerful. It is active. It's, look, God's word is not static. It's dynamic. There is something that God is doing. That Bible you have in your lap is not a dead book. It's not a fairy tale. It's not a waste of time. Everything you need is in there. And you know, you still, now you still got to have a preacher. How can they hear without a preacher? So I ain't gonna put my, I'm not going to put myself out of a job. How can they hear without a preacher? You need to read the Bible and have the Bible preached and taught to you. Because the word of God is living. Satan wants to kill us all. Rob us of life. Rob us of vitality. Rob you of energy. Rob you of your get up and go. Rob us of our zest for life. One of the first things I noticed about the sanctified people when I started going to the sanctified church, sanctified folks seem to be more alive. Amen. 
especially the elderly sanctified. I remember the church mothers uh, at the Temple Church of God in Christ versus the mothers, the seniors uh, at the Methodist Church. There's a big difference. They had a life. Get on that floor and just dance. After service, have something to tell you. And was on fire for the Lord. Uh, had some hot sauce in their veins for blood. <laughs> Say amen. amen. And uh, life. God wants you to live. See, some of us, you're too young to be so inactive. You, you're too young to be so sedentary. You're too young to be so tired. Why you, why you, why you on antidepressants young as you are? Talking about depressed children. How many light bills you pay? No water bill, no light bill. And everybody's, you know, this thing about all this bullying and all this stuff. Look, why don't you, in God, you know what you can do? You can decide that you're not going to play that game. You can decide that you're not going to participate. I didn't know until Gabriel and Heath and Tom told me. Uh, but when I got, after I got saved and I'm running around at 16, everywhere with my Bible in my hand, I didn't know all of them were talking about me and laughing at me. Look at Patty throwing away his life with that Bible, going to church, running around with a Bible in his hand. Ain't nobody laughing now. Oh, Lord. Let me tell you something. It was, it was the most joyful thing. It was the most in, enjoyable thing to get in God, yeah. to get in Jesus. So once I met Jesus, nothing compared. You know, the Bible says our God is a consuming fire. He burns, consuming fire, ever growing. Nothing compares to serving him. I knew that Christianity was for me for the rest of my days when we won the state championship. I'll never forget that Friday night. We won the championship. And I'm not going to talk about high school football. But we won the championship. And I'm out there on the field. I'll never forget it. He, if you were there, he was cheering his big brother on. He was just a little skinny, little light-skinned boy at the time, a little redhead. Cheering me on. I'm out there on the field. And we won the first time Richmond County had won the state championship. We weren't picked to win. And by the way, there's only one state champion in this whole pulpit. Uh, I'm just having some fun with you. Standing there, it's standing there, and I said, man. This don't compare to a Friday night church service. This ain't as good as when the Holy Ghost take over and the saints start shouting. I knew then, mm -mm, this Jesus thing, this sanctified stuff, this is for me. And from that day to this day, I have found nothing and no one that can compare. As a matter of fact, everybody who competes with it and everything loses. Praise the Lord. Because I'm going with Jesus. How many can say today, I'm going with Jesus. I'm going with him all the way. Nothing, nothing, no one can compete with him. He is good and, and worthy to be praised. And that, but that's because the word of the Lord is active. It's dynamic. It is not static. It moves. It doesn't change in its truth and what it teaches, but it's a current. It's a lie. God's word will set you free. And notice what it does. It, 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 you know what it does? It judges you. Nothing knows you and no one examines you like the word of God. 
Look at what it says. The word of the Lord is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing. Even to the dividing of sunder. Look at this. Look at the depths of you. Your soul and your spirit. And the joints and the marrow. And then it just tells you. And is a judge. A discerner. Of the thoughts. Do you see that? Thoughts. Deliberations. The word of God will tell you. You know you shouldn't be thinking that. You know you shouldn't be planning that. I mean the word will speak when you don't want it to. God ain't trying to hear you right now. You know you ought not to be doing that. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents, the actions, the intents, the purposes of the heart. Now that, that book you got in your lap, that's something. That Bible is something else. Romans chapter 12, I'm going to preach faster now. And verse 2 speaks to this powerful book and what it does to you. And uh, Pamela, and I want you and the young folk to, to, to get this part. So proud of my granddaughter. She, she stepped back there the other day. She was looking like a, just, just so beautiful, like a queen. And uh, I, I asked all the guys, I asked all the guys, I, I, if I had the picture in here, I put it on the screen. All the armor bearer, all my men, we all took a picture standing with her. And we were so proud. Praise the Lord. She's such a fine young lady. Ba baby, I want you to get this. And all the other young folk, grown people too, uh, old folk too, but I really want you to get this. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. That is, be not outwardly shaped or molded to this age. Bible speaks to everything. See, fashions change. Fashion. Boy, I feel a, a holy hush up in here. I said, I said, now where is he going? See, you can't let the age change you. I don't care how fashionable it may be. For everything to be skin tight. It doesn't make any difference. We are called not to be molded by the age. Thank God for those three applause. Brethren, we'll, see, uh, we're called not to be molded. That's why I talk to you about them. Watch your hair. I know, I know I don't get much uh, support on it. But that's why, that's because you're not reading your Bible. Well, this puppet, this is what all of them are doing now. Be not conformed to this age. See, see, it's how, it's how things are manifested. It's the devil. The age. It, the age has changed. Just like right now, it is so popular. It's so popular. Everybody getting these tattoos. Now, that will eventually go out because it comes in and goes out. But you ain't going to have no space on your body because you consumed everything. Why not? I want to say, you're so proud to be black. You're so proud to be white. You're so proud of your color. Why are you messing it up? I don't want nobody who has tattoos to get up and get mad. He's talking about my tattoos and everybody else's. The Bible says at least four times not to do that. You've never read it. Now you've heard it. Uh, but if it's done, then the uh, Bible says let him that stole steal no more. Don't add, no, don't add a new one. Just thank God. You just praise the Lord. Because from what I understand, of course I don't know I don't have any. They're painful to remove. And you know, saints don't want to go through no pain. <laughs> I, better, I better hurry up and preach. I'm going to mess around here, and y'all going to go run out the door on me. And you're going to be mad. And the only thing you're going to remember, remember out the whole sermon is this part. And be not outwardly shaped, nor conformed 
uh, to this age because ages change but be ye transformed be changed by the renewing the renovating of your mind see this is what I love about the word of God the word of God will change your mind it will change the way you think it will change your desire it changes your nature it changes what you call attractive it will change what you call handsome or pretty. It renovates. It doesn't just clean up. It doesn't just straighten up. It renovates. So you go into a room. Yeah. Well, tidy up. That's not renovating it. Renovating that thing, you you changing the whole thing. Folk walk in, don't even recognize it. Oh, my God. Is this the same room? Yes. What happened? I renovated it. God wants to get in your head and renovate it. He, and, and, and my brothers and sisters, I want you to know, many of you, God is doing that. Just that. You're finding yourself attending church more. You're finding yourself being a different kind of guy. And I hope that your girlfriend or your spouse is someone who encourages your renovation. Boy, it's bad to be trying to change, but you're hooked up with somebody who's trying to keep you out there. She want to keep you hooked on drugs because she's scared that she's going to lose you otherwise. Want to get you out the church. I don't like you since you've been going over there listening to Wooden. Before you went there, I liked the way you dressed before. I liked the way you talked before. I enjoyed the way you beat me up before. I love being your B before. And he taught you to treat me like a lady. I don't want to be treated like no lady. Leave her. Come on over and marry a woman with some sense. Who's looking for somebody who want to be sanctified. That's good preaching. Or him. You're trying to be saved. And you can't grow for fooling with him. A loser. Always got a problem with the church. Always has a problem with the preacher. Always. And he's the problem. The, the problem is he's the problem. But he don't want to change. So you, he knows right now. He see you changing. But he's trying to get you out. Before you get totally renovated because the more the Lord deals with your mind the smaller he becomes and he knows it what's well, good preaching right here it's good preaching this is good preaching he knows oh praise the Lord because now you're around saints and you're around grown people who look grown talk grown act grown Said in church, the men dress like they grown. We ain't trying to look like a uh, rap artist. We're not, we're not trying to look like Snoop Dogg. We're not sitting up in here, praise the Lord, all slumped. You ain't got to sit in a church, all slumped down in the chair, leaning over, looking like like that. The movies, you can't get blessed because he laying all over you. So now you find yourself slipping to church and leaving him home. You don't even tell him. He's in the, but, but the moment they see you slipping away, they'll try to pull you out of God. And you got to know when, if, they, if a person is not going to follow you as you go with you in your journey for Christ, cut him off. Because you're going to need Jesus. You're going to need Jesus because you eventually break up with him anyway. Or her. Because God's not going to bless it. Now it's going to end. Now it may end, leave you with three of his children. Oh, 
This is good preaching right here. It may end and she's your baby mama and she ain't going to give you any problems until she find out that you like one of them church girls. And uh, y'all talking about getting married. Here she come. Here she come. Her and them. And I want my money. I want, I want back. I want. And uh, you're in a bad spot. And then the, 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 the church girl, she got to decide if she want to put up with that foolishness. I'm going to ask you to do something that I know you want to do right now. Give me a big hand. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, being, I'm being real with you. I'm telling you the truth. See, when the Lord began to renovate your mind, he changes. It changes. You, you see things differently. You say, what's going on with me? I don't even know myself. It's working on you. It's working on you. You don't want that anymore. You don't want that. You, you'll go home one day and just take all the beer out the refrigerator. Throw it away. Some of the, some of the, the carnal person, because you know you just got saved. Carnal person come, well, uh, honey, uh, well, I threw it away. What? <laughs> Why'd you do that? I don't want that no more. Oh, no, there you go trying to be a church. There you go. That's what's wrong. No, no, no. You be, you be what God is calling you to be. Go with God. Let the Lord renew your mind. Let the Lord change you. Let him. If you're wise, you'll get changed together. I'm spending too much time on this. Be not conformed. But be ye changed, be ye transformed by the renovation of your mind that you may prove, let me help you with this, that you may have access. Not prove as to prove whether it's good or bad. But God wants you to prove a thing by experiencing it. By having access. See, you want him to renew your mind so you can have access to look at this, uh, uh, that you may prove what is that good, that is that profitable and useful and acceptable, that well pleasing and perfect, complete will of God. God wants you to know it, God wants you to have access to his will, his way, or oh, it is so profitable, you start, you, 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 all of a sudden, you don't want to hear all that, all that cussing. Your spirit can't tolerate, you know, you love rap, you love your favorite artist, and now, you notice, you're not playing that anymore. Amen. What's going on? The Lord's re renovating. Oh my, do I have any people who've been renovated? Amen. Now see, now, now once that renovation takes place, boy, it's done. Hey, you don't see things like you saw them before. What happened to you? Renovated. I think I'll preach that one Sunday. Renovated. Ah, I've been renovated. Renovated. Ah, renovated. Renovate. Renovate. Renovate my mind. That's what he did. Goodbye cigarettes, goodbye club, goodbye fornication. Oh Lord, what happened? I got a renovated mind. Let a preach one. You know why? You know why you identify with that? So many of you in here today has been renovated. You've experienced it. You've experienced it. You don't hate folk anymore. Man, God got through with your mind. You didn't want to be a sissy no more. When the Lord finished renovating you, you told all them boys, I ain't doing that no more. No, you want to, not anymore. My mind has been changed. Woo! So, let me preach the text and go home. 
David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. That is, I am going to bless him continually. What he, let me tell you what he's not saying. He's not saying I'm going to walk around saying, bless the Lord, 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 which, you know, you could, but bless the Lord. That's not what he's saying. Bless there means to kneel, but it also means to speak appreciatively. That is, when you talk about the Lord, you're going to appreciate him. It is to speak kind words. Oh my, it is to tell of his goodness. It deals with a disposition and an attitude. It, 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 it even affects the way you work on your job. It affects everything that you do. Colossians chapter number 3 verse 17 says, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and to the Father. It is the will of God for believers to have a certain disposition that displays appreciation and thanks. All these lemon saints. Mad believers, believers who won't smile, believers who are always uptight, believers who are always mad, believers, oh no, mm -mm, you better get over that. Let the Lord work on your disposition. Be the kind of person where you, if you got a job, thank God that you're able to do it and do it as unto the Lord. It's good preaching. And, uh, uh his praise shall continually be in my mouth. It's a continual disposition. I'm going to bless him. I'm going to speak well of him in all seasons of life. And in everybody's life, seasons change. This is why when you're in a good season, enjoy your season, but don't get arrogant. Don't get a big head. Maybe right now in your life, everything is perfect. It never stays that way. Maybe right now in your life, everybody's doing like they're supposed to do. Thank God. Enjoy. But it doesn't stay that way. Right now you're in a season where your car just, oh, the car just runs. Thank God for it. It's going to break down. When we ride together, you know, I can't on the preacher sermon without talking about riding the bike. When we ride together, when, when one of the riders get a flat tire, all of us stop. All of us make sure we either get that tire changed or we all walk together. We have walked together at night in the rain and the cold because we don't leave each other but we didn't have what we needed to fix it so that means it's cold it's dark everybody catching a cold but we're all walking because we're together that's the way it works I know some of you think well I, I can't do that that's because you're not a rider say amen but if you're one of them see you have to but at the same time, see, my point I'm making is this. That doesn't happen every day. Now, the issue is, the point is, there's got to be something that transcends the seasons. Most of the time when we ride, nobody has a flat. But there are seasons when they, when I had one. I had, look, I had two in one day. Within 20 minutes. How about this? The tire got ready to take off. Bam! The tire went out. We called the place, went to track, got a new tire put, got a tire fixed, and went back. The guy waited for me, and we took off again. And at three seconds, twenty seconds, boom! Same tire went out again. I told the guys then, God's trying to tell me something, so I went on home. <laughs> Say amen. But. Those things happen few and far between. But here's what we've learned to do. Whether the tires are, are performing like we want them to or whether the tires are going flat, we've learned that you bless the Lord and you stay a Christian and you behave like a believer through all of the seasons. See, through all of life's seasons. That's what David is saying. Through every season of life. I got to know how to be real and how to bless God and how to lift my head. Then he goes a little deeper. He goes deeper. He goes from blessing the Lord at all times with his mouth. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. To David calls on the totality of his being. He said, my soul, all of me, 
shall make a boast in the Lord. And you know I'm going to boast. And the humble shall hear my story. And notice the joy of the Lord is in, it's infectious. And be glad. They're going to hear it and be glad. Then he gives an invitation. Let me preach faster. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Look at this invitation. Let us exalt his name together. And he's not talking about a dead praise, but a robust, spontaneous, delightful outbreak of praise. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Why does he, is he inviting folk to join in and help him magnify the Lord? He said he's going to bless him at all times. Why do you want everybody else in? He said, let me tell you what's motivating me today. Let me tell you what happened. What happened to you, David? He said, I sought the Lord. I sought him. I didn't pray one prayer. I sought him kept calling on him until I got through to him. I sought the Lord. Do you see that? And guess what happened? Guess what happened? I sought the Lord and he heard me. He heard me. That is, he listened and heard that. He listened and he responded. The Lord told me to tell you I'm going to listen and I'm going to respond. Praise the Lord. Now that's something worth telling your neighbor. You ought to remind them that God listens and God responds. That's good preaching. He had me and he responded to me. And when he responded, he responded with action. Action. You see the action? And delivered me from all my fears. Action. He did something. God told me to tell you. I'm not inactive. See, see where I started, right? You, you're putting it together. God told me to tell you. I'm moving. You're going through a season of God moving. Moving. I'm responding. Because some of you have been praying and waiting on some, waiting on a blessing. But I'm here to tell you, God's not through blessing you. Hallelujah. Keep your faith. Keep your hand in his hands. You're closer to it than when you first believed. He said, he uh, delivered me from all my fears. Fears. There's a lot of things in life that causes fear. Rocket don't go far. Fears. I'm, I haven't experienced it. I pray that I don't. But I'm told that when the doctor tells you that you have the C word, fear can grip you. That for a minute, you can't hear anything else. Amen. Fear. Somebody said, well, I, if they tell me I'm not going to be afraid, well, how about waiting to get told? You know. It's easy to say what you're going to do and not going to do. You don't know what you're going to do. But there are things in life that produces fear. But thank God that not only does God deliver you from your fears. But in this word fear, David is saying he delivered me from the source of my fear. And in this case, the source of his fears was his enemies. God is a deliverer from fear. And he delivers us from the source of our fears. And then David talked about what God did for his companions. He said they looked unto him. To look to God means to trust the Lord in the time of need. Look to him is to trust him in the time of need. They looked to him and were enlightened. That is, when you look to God, he causes you to be radiant. He causes you to glow. There's a blessing attached to looking to the Lord. They looked to him and they were radiant. And one thing about it, the radiance of God keeps away shame. It keeps away despair. It keeps away depression. So they looked to him and they were not ashamed. 
Then I heard him say, this poor man cried. Hence my title, I cried. And he delivered me. I, I cried and God heard me. And saved him from all of his trouble. Thank God for being a God who answers. And he does things. He's moving things. Action is in his answers. And, and, uh, and it says, and the angel of the Lord, praise the Lord. Verse 7, he gives the imagery of a battlefield. And we see it. At court. This is Camp Victory. It said the angel of the Lord encampeth battlefield around them that fear him to deliver them. Thank God that Jesus is with those of us who are with him. I want to preach to you today and tell you that God's going to give you supernatural deliverance. God's going to give you supernatural power. Supernatural help. Where is that in the Bible? I'm glad you asked. Uh, Gideon, uh, Joshua, Joshua 5 and 13 says, and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua, you know, Joshua sure was courageous. And Joshua went up to him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And the angel of the Lord looked at him and said, Nay, that is neither. I'm not for you. I'm not for your adversaries. God is not for the Democrats. The Lord is not for the Republicans. He said, neither. I'm watch this now. Uh, but as, he says, but as captain of the host of the Lord, I now come. See, God is not for either camp. Let me help you before you lose your mind. But what the Lord wants to know is which camp is for him. Which camp is for him? For when he told Joshua, I'm for neither. Notice what Joshua did. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship. And, and look at this. And said unto him, what saith my Lord to his servant? Joshua said, well, if you, even though you, you didn't say you were for our camp, and you didn't say that you were for their camp, he said, I want you to know I'm for you. See, God wants to know who's for him. Now, you can't be for him and kill all them babies. You can't be for him and promote all them sissies. And lesbians and homosexual, you can't be for him and promote what his word says is wrong. So it's not who, praise the Lord, what party uh, I'm with, it's whom I'm with. I'm on the Lord's side. Ah, ask your, your, ask your neighbor, what's, whose side are you on? I'm on the Lord's side. See, if you're on God's side, don't worry about whether or not God's on your side. Get on his side. Somebody told me, said, wouldn't you going to be on the wrong side of history? I said to them, I'm not worried about being on the wrong side of history. I just want to be on the God side of history. If I'm on God's side, then I'm satisfied. And I heard him say, and, uh, and verse 15, And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, after Joshua worshipped him, he said to him the same thing that he said to his predecessor in Exodus chapter 3, And uh, he said to him, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, uh, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. When Joshua said, I'm with you, then he said, now you're where you can get my supernatural help. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. So Moses said, uh, David, excuse me, said, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him to deliver them. Then he gives one more invitation. He says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That is, I'm giving you an, in an invitation to experience this, to test this. I'm so glad that I tried him for myself. I'm so glad that I tasted Jesus for myself. And I can testify, happy is the man that trusteth in him. And the last invitation he gave, he said, oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. Learn how to respect him. Learn how to reverence him. For if you respect God, obey God, and reverence the Lord, he said, no lack will come to them that fear him. The question is, what made David so excited? Let's go home, Rocky. It's time to land this plane. Hallelujah. What happened? Well, I'll tell you what happened. David got caught in a bad place. He was on the run from Saul. Help me out, brother sound technician. I'm going home now. On the run from Saul. He had just stopped by the house of Ahimelech. And he's on the run. And he finds himself in enemy territory. Hallelujah. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 21 and verse 10. And David arose and fled. Look at that. For he fled that day for fear of Saul. He was running on a road that was a winding road. And he got on that part of the road that went into the enemy's territory. He ended up in Gath and the king of Akish. He ended up in Akish, uh, the king of Gath. So Gath was the location. Akish was the king. And the servants of Akish said unto him, we know who this stranger is this man here who's on the run he's by himself but we recognize him they said who is he they said this is david this is david hallelujah he's the one that the women sang about he's the one that they said he's killed ten thousands Saul have killed thousands and king in those ten thousands. Many of them was uh, members of Palestine. They were members of Gath. He killed a lot of us. But we got him now. His men are not with him. He's by himself. We can kill him now. Have you ever been in a situation where the devil said, I got him now. There's no place for him to run. But thank God, when David heard these words in his heart, he was afraid. But Psalms 34 tell us that in his fear, he began to pray. He cried to the Lord. He said, God, what am I to do? How do I get out of this? I have no help. I have no friends. My mighty men are somewhere else. I only have a spear, a sword, Goliath's sword. I can't beat these people. What am I going to do? My back is against the wall. God spoke to him. God said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pretend to be insane. Pretend to be mad. I want you to let uh, slobber come out of your mouth. Beat your head against the wall. Scramble on the wall. Act like you're crazy. You see, when God 
give you instructions sometimes they don't make sense but it makes sense to obey God the Lord said lay the madman act like a fool so David the mighty David begin to behave like he had a stroke begin to behave like he was crazy the king looked at him and said get this madman away from me there's no job there's no victory in defeating a crazy man they took David and they let him go and as soon as they let him go he wiped his mouth he stood up he got away he ran from them found a pen found some paper and began to write I will bless the Lord at all times because as crazy as that plan was it worked it worked I'm telling you God knows how to deliver every one of you sometimes the Lord will say just run sometimes the Lord will say sing to me sometimes the Lord will say with death all around sickness everywhere give me praise sometimes the Lord will say I know you don't feel like going to church but get up get dressed come on sometimes the Lord will say give your life you tell the Lord I'm broke I don't have much the Lord will say give me what you have it makes no sense but if you pray if you pray when he gives you instructions obey and he will deliver he will set you free say yeah say yeah ah! hallelujah hallelujah you ought to look at someone and say I cried and he delivered me oh, I cried and he delivered me what he told me to do it didn't make sense but I did it and I came back with the victory I found out that he is that he's able to change hearts to change minds he's able to move the storm he's able to change everything you just praise him you just testify you obey him and do what he says and he will he'll move heaven and earth he'll take this down he'll put that up he'll move over here He'll move over there. Won't he do it? Wow! Somebody here can testify and say, Preacher, my back was against the wall, but I cried. Hey! Wow! I cried. Wow! I cried. And he delivered me say yeah say yeah hallelujah 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 all theologians all theologians agree that Psalms 34 was written after God delivered David from the hands of the Philistines. No wonder he came back and said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. But in my clothes, there are 
have folk in here. In here. In here. Who can say my back was against the wall? I was called like David, defenseless. But God gave me a plan. I obeyed the law and he made a way for me. If you can testify, lift your hands and thank the Lord. He delivered me. Oh, I cried. And he delivered me. He delivered my poor soul. If you need God to move some things for you, and I'm preaching to you, come down the aisle and meet me on the altar and we're going to seek the Lord. Why are you coming? I cried and he delivered me. I cried and he delivered me. I cried and he delivered me. Delivered my poor soul.
bless you at all times. Your praise shall continually be in my mouth while you're on the altar. Begin to speak words of appreciation to the Lord. Tell him how much you thank him. Tell him how much you thank him. Tell him how much you thank him. Tell him how much you love him. You ought to praise him for what he's done in the past. You ought to praise him for how he brought you through. Good God Almighty, praise him for how he's made ways out of no way. Thank him for renovating your mind. Thank him for what he's done in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, that's right. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him at this time, bless him at all times, bless him, bless him, you are streaming, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, you ought to bless him so much, good God Almighty, that you don't even have time to even write a comment, tell the comment people, I'll be back in a minute, but I need to lift both hands and bless the Lord, good God Almighty. Let His praise continually be in your mouth. You know why you're blessing Him. You know your back was against the wall. You know that things had gone south. The devil thought he had you, but you got away. The devil knew he had you, but God delivered. The devil thought he had you. He thought that sickness was unto death, but the Lord let you live. He thought he had you. He thought he'd broken your spirit. He thought he'd broken your heart. He thought he'd broken your mind, but God revived you. Put your back on your feet. He put running in your feet. He put clapping in your hands. He put joy in your heart. Hallelujah. He touched your mind. He touched your spirit. He gave you the assurance that everything is going to work out just fine. Yes, he did. He did it before. He told me to tell you that he's going to do it again. And he's moving things. And he's moving things. And he's moving things. He's arranging things. He's arranging things. He's rearranging things. He's setting things up. He's doing this. He's doing that. Yes, he is. Because he's active. He's active. God is moving by his spirit. Moving in all the world. Signs and wonders. God is he using. Move, oh God, in me. Tell him to move in you. Tell him to move in you. Tell him to move in you. Move, Lord. Move in my mind. Move, Lord. Move in my situation. Move, Lord. Move in my heart. Move, Lord. Move in my family. Move, Lord. Move on my son. Move, Lord. Deliver. Move, Lord. Move, Lord. Somebody's praying. Move on my daughter. Move on my husband. Move on my wife. Move, Lord. On my job. Move, Lord. In my body. Move, Lord. In my spirit. In my spirit. In my spirit. In my mind. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. You're God, and there's nobody like you. You're mighty. You're wonderful. God who have blessed us in ages past. God who have been there all the time. God who have anointed us to serve and to work and to lift you up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you right now. We bless your name. We praise you for your healing. We praise you for your delivering power. We praise you, Lord, that this poor man, we poor people, we cried and you delivered us. We cried and you heard our prayer. We cried and you responded. You responded. You responded in a mighty way. You responded.
did big time. And we want to thank you. We want to thank you. Thank you for the response. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for delivering. Thank you for setting free. Thank you for what? It's going to be done tomorrow, next week, next month. Thank you for as long as it takes. I'm going to bless you for as long as it takes. I'm going to bless you. I want to speak well of you. I want to give you glory because you're our God. You're our God. You're our God. Who's going for God for themselves? Who's calling on him? Who's calling on him? Oh, ah, touch me. Touch me again. Touch me again. Touch me again, Lord. Touch me again, Lord. Touch me again, Lord. Touch me again. Touch me again, Lord. Jesus. 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 Some of you never been coming after you through your household. You've been standing your ground. God says, I got you. I'll show you. I'll prove to you who's who and what's what. Because he responds. He responds. He responds, he responds, he responds. Oh, oh, oh Lord. You got one more minute. Seek him. Seek him. Experience his goodness. Experience it. 